Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do simple pagination using Django REST framework and view. The front end will look something like this. You have a list of five posts and when you click next you will get the five next and you also have a previous button. So you can go back and forth doing this. It might not look very advanced but it's only meant to teach you how to do pagination using Django REST framework. Okay, I have an empty Django project here. I have installed Django REST framework. So the next step now is to just create the first app, which is a blog application for Django. So python manage.py start app blog, because I want posts for the pagination. So now that that's created, I can go to the editor. And here I will now have blog, and then I need to create a model so we can have some posts in the database. And it's going to be very simple. I just need a class, pass in models.model, and then a title equals models.char field, max length 255. And I don't want anything more here, since this is just for testing the pagination in Django REST framework. And then in here, in the settings.py, I need to add and register the REST framework and also blog.apps.apps, no blog config. So I'm running Django 3.2 and then this is the new way to register apps. Great, so now that we have registered app with Django, we have the model, we can update the database by saying python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. Great, so now I can run the server, so I have it in the background. If I open this now, go to the browser. Yes, so now Django is running successfully, perfect. So next step now is to just create a very simple front page where we can show the posts. Create a folder, templates blog and in there an index.html so add the doc type html html tag and a body and in here i want to loop through the posts but i can come back to that later first i just want to have a div id blog this is the I want to use for view and then below here I'm going to use a CDN to include view src https colon slash slash npkg.com slash view at next to make sure that we are using view 3 and then we can create the view app as well so we have it const blog this can just be an empty object for now and then below there view dot create app blog and I want to mount this to blog which is this here. I can actually also add data return and mounted the lifecycle hook so console.log Hi, just to make sure that everything is working. And then to present this website, you also need to go into views.py to create a new view. Def index quest return render request and then blog slash index.html. Save. And we need a URLs file, urls.py from django.urls import path and include. I want to need the include later. Include URL patterns equals path. And when this is empty, I want to use the views.index view. Name index. And to import index, I can say from dot import views. Last step now before we can test this is to just import this to the main URLs page. So here we need to add include as well. And 
and this is empty. I want to include blog.urls and save. Great, there are no errors, so I can try to refresh. And now we should see the index page. And if I go into the inspector, you will see hi here, which is coming from view. Perfect. So now everything there is working. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And the next step now is to set up a serializer for Payton for the Django REST framework. To do that, we go back to the editor and into the blog app and create the serializer. Serializers.py. And the first thing I need in here is to import a few things from REST framework, import serializers. And I need to import the post model I just created. So from dot models import post. And then I want to create a post serializer. Pass in serializers.model serializer and then I need to add a class meta to configure this and I want to set the model to use which is post of course and which fields I want to get in the front end and this is id and title and save. It doesn't look anything more advanced than this so I can now go to the views.py and try to implement this here. So from dot models import post because I'm going to need this and from dot serializers import the post serializer we just created. Also need to import two things from the rest framework here. From rest framework import view sets and from rest framework import sorry dot pagination import page number pagination great so then I need to create a pagination class class post pagination this is for configuring how many posts I want per page page number pagination need to extend this class and here I'll just say page size equals 5. And then below here I can create the view set for getting the posts from the database. Class post view set pass in view sets dot model view set. And then I need to set which pagination class I want to use. And that is of course pagination class. And I need to set which serializer class to use. And that's the post serializer we created. And the query set, which is post.objects.all, because I want to get all of them from the database. And now this will make sure that it only takes five and five. And there will also be a lot of other magic happening in the background. But if we save now, we'll see that there are no errors. Perfect. So we can import this to the URLs page as well. So we can access it from the front page. So if we go into urls.py, at the top here, I need to import the default router from the REST framework. From REST framework dot routers import default router. And I also need to create a router. So router equals default router, router.register posts views dot post view set. This is the one we created here and base name equals posts. So this helps us both this and this gives us cred functionality from Django REST framework so we can now create, read, update and delete objects. So we get a lot of cool functionality just by doing this. And below here we just need to add them here. 
can be empty as well and include router.urls so when we now go to the page slash posts we should get a list of posts so we can try that now by going here go to posts and you can see here the count is zero and there are nothing in the results but down here will now be a form for submitting posts so posts one now we have one and if i go back to the posts list there you'll see that we now have one and we get this in the results so let's try to add a few more just want to add a couple more so i have a little to go back and forth on 13. So if I now go to the post list, this will only show me five pieces of posts and it also says how many appear and the next page we can go to to get the five next will be this. So then we get six, seven, eight and nine and ten. Perfect. So now that we know that we can go here to check this out, we can go back to the front page and use view to get these from the back end and present them here on the screen. So if I go back here again and into index.html in this data array I want one a variable called posts which should be a list of the posts and I also want one variable to keep track of the page we are on. So current page set this to be one. And then below the mounted lifecycle hooks, I need to add methods. So we can create a function for getting the posts from the database. Get posts. And here I want to use fetch. So today I'm going to use fetch instead of Axios. This is built into all of the browsers. So fetch. And then the backticks. Slash posts. Like that. And come back with more later and when that's done I said then response create a fat arrow function and in here I just say return response.json and then we create a new dot then so when this is finished it will go in here data and a new function so this will return us the data we need. And in here we can say console.log data. And if there are any error, we can show them in the console. Console.log error. So now we just need to call the get posts function. So this dot get posts and save. If I now refresh, okay, I get an error here. Dot then, dot then. This should be catch, of course. So now I don't get any errors, and here we can see the information I get from the back end. So it says count 13, the next or the URL I can go to to get page 2, and also the results. So let's show them here instead of just in the console. So up here in the blog ID, I said div v4 post in posts and v bind key post.id. Close the div and create an h2 in here. And to show the posts title, I said post.title. And as you can see here, I now use these square brackets instead of the usual curly brackets. And that is because we are in a Django template now. And to make sure that if you use as this, you can go down here and say delimiters. Create an array. Two curly br uh, square brackets and the other way. Great. So now if I refresh. I did not see the title there, of course not, because I forgot to assign the posts array down here. So in here I said this.posts equals data.results. So I assign the value of this to posts. 
So now we'll get the title there. Perfect. So next step now is to create the button here so we can go to page two to see the posts from page two. And then below this div, I say template v if because I only want to show this if we are allowed to. So show next button if this value, if the value of this variable is true, then we show the next button. Button at click load next like that. So then we need to add this at the bottom here and set the default to false because we only want to show this if we know that there are a next URL coming from the back end. So in here I can say if data.next, then I know that here that there is a next page. This dot show next button equals true. And then at the top here, we should always reset this to false. And then we also need a function for load next. So we can add this above get posts. And here we just say this dot current page plus equals one and this dot get posts. So it just increments this with one and then call this function again. That means that we also need to change this so we can pass in the page number to the back end. So question mark page equals dollar sign curly bracket this dot current page and close that. So now this should say page equals two and then get the response from there and replace this with the posts from that page. So if we save now, go back and refresh, we have the next button. If I click it, we go to page two, click it again, we only get three and the next button is gone. Perfect. Now we just want to make it possible to go back as well. So make a copy of this. Show pre prev button load prev like that. Let's create this func ny variable false. And we also want to reset this here. This dot show prev button equals false. Make a copy of this. If data dot previous. That's the variable coming from the back end. Then we want to set this to true. And we can make a copy of this function. Load prev. Then it's of course minus one. And we just call this again. Great. So if I now go back, refresh, I can go to next, I can go back. And if we go to the end, only the previous button will show. Perfect. So that's basically how you do simple pagination using Django REST framework. Instead of using the this clause, you can set the default values in the in settings.py if you wanted to do that. But I like to set it based on the model or view I'm going to use it on. So then it's nice to just do it this way. And that was it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click like below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next video.